Hi there. Today we're going to look at uh, lesson seven, slope as a rate of change. So most of us have kind of started to put this together. You know, the slope represents a relationship between the rise and the run, and and that's the y and the x. But not always are we going to have y and x. We might actually, most of the time, you are going to have some real variables that you're going to be working with. So so how do those variables relate? Is what we're going to look at today. So the first, um, the first example here, it says um, the graph shows uh, represents a distance traveled by a car as a linear function of time. So the distance here is on the y axis. That's the dependent variable, and the independent variable, the x, is the time. So here's a car. It's moving along. It starts at a distance of zero and a time of zero, and then one hour later, it is 40 kilometers from where it started from, and then three hours later, it is 120 kilometers. So let's see if we can use this information uh, to look at uh, a rate of change. So what is the what is the slope here? Well, the slope is going to be 120 minus 40 over 3 minus 1, which is going to come out to be... Um, 120 minus 40 is 80 over 2, which is 40 over 1. And again, what are our units here is uh, distance divided by time. Uh, the rise in this case is, a, is the distance. I'll put little d there, and this is time for, for, for the run. So the distance is increasing at a rate of 40 kilometers per one hour because that is 40 kilometers per per one hour okay so that is uh, that is a rate of change meaning for every hour you go 40 kil uh, 40 kilometers okay let's look at the second one here uh, we have an, we have an oven actually you know what you guys do this one I'll jump on to some of the harder ones here so go ahead and pause the video and, and, and give that one a try I will jump on to uh, some of the examples down here. All right, so it says here, Tyrone is paid a base salary per week plus commission for selling electrical appliances. Last week, his sales totaled $3,500, and he earned $620. This week, he earned $680 for sales of $400. 4,250. So on a grid, plot these ordered pairs. So we have sales. Uh, sales could be, um, or, or, you know, again, you want to have a good scale here. It goes up to 4,000. So I want to make this up to 5,000. So I'll, again, I'll roughly estimate this. This, his earnings go uh, to about 700 here. So I might just do a rough sketch of sales, 700. And this here is going to be uh, $5,000. Uh, okay, so the first one is uh, 3,500, 3,500 is going to be somewhere maybe here. Again, you can just eyeball this. That's, uh, and again, write the point in here. So that's 3, 5, uh, 35, uh, 3,500, comma, 620. And the other point is um, 4,200. And so it's just a little higher. And a little more over here, and that's the second second point, which is going to be 4,250 4, and 680. Oops, my pen's getting. All right, now go ahead and connect your connect those two lines, and you can clearly see there's a relationship here. The more he sells, the more he earns. Okay, let's calculate the slope. The slope is going to be rise over run so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and we have uh, 680 minus 620 over uh, 4250 minus 3 3500 all right so this is going to be uh, 60 over 750 Okay, so uh, so basically, if I simplify that, I'll get six over seventy-five. And again, keep in mind that both of these are dollars. 
So for every, you know, we can interpret this here. Oh, that's the part C. Let me do it where it's supposed to be done here. So explain what the slope of the graph re represents. For every $75 that he sells, he keeps $6. He keeps $6, okay? So state as a percent the rate of commission which Tyrone is paid. So 6 divided by 75 is going to be, let me get my calculator out, 6 divided by 75 is going to be times uh, 100 is going to be 8%. So he earns a commission of 8%. State as, oops, that one's there. Calculate his weekly base salary. So weekly base salary is here. So even if he doesn't sell anything, he still makes some change. So that's the y-intercept. So how are we going to calculate the y-intercept? Well, in order to do that, I need to come up with an equation first. And again, knowing all our knowledge with uh, different forms of equations, I'm going to, f uh, I have the slope and I have a point. So I'm going to jump right into uh, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1 and pick any of, the, any of the points. So either this one or this one. Might pick this one here. Might be a little bit easier to work with. 620, y minus 620 equals 6 over 75 uh, x <clears throat> minus 3500 okay and now the question says uh, calculate his weekly base salary so I need the y-intercept so I'm gonna make the x equal 0 so I'm going to make that equal 0 and I have to do some math now so let's go ahead and do that I'm first going to multiply everything by 75, so 75, 75, 75, so I'll get 75y minus, again, I'll get my calculator out here, 620, 620 times uh, 75 for, oops, what was that, missed that one, 46,500. 46,500 equals that cancels equals uh, six times negative uh, three three uh, thousand five hundred so six times negative three five zero zero so that's negative twenty one thousand I believe it was let me double check good Okay, and now I'm going to add this to both sides. So I'll just keep that on my calculator. Add uh, four six five zero zero to both sides, and finally divide that number by seventy-five to get y equals three hundred and forty. Three hundred and forty. Okay. So what did I just do there? I calculated the y-intercept. The y-intercept, um, and this should probably just be his earnings, so his earnings are $340. Okay, how does the uh, the answer to E relate to the graph? Well, I already mentioned that. That is the y-intercept right there. That is the coordinate 0, 340. Okay, so that one took a little bit longer. So again, you you know, you know this is why knowing this equation is useful without knowing how to put this into an equation, we wouldn't be able to get the y-intercept. Okay, let's do, a, oh, wait a minute, write the equation in the form of E equals MS plus B, while the earnings equals, uh, what was it, 6 over 75, so 6 over 75 times the sales plus his base salary of 340. Okay, two weeks ago, I'll keep going here. Two weeks ago, Tyrone earned $486. Calculate his sales for the week. So two weeks ago, he earned, so if he earned $486, how much, how much uh, did he sell? So just solve for S there, and I'm going to let you go ahead and finish that off. Okay, last one, average speed. This is a common problem you're going to see in physics 11, so get uh, get some practice doing these here for average speed. It says John is taking part in a long distance car race. After three hours, he traveled 270 kilometers. 
let me go ahead and mark that on the graph right away. So always times on the bottom. So I'll use um, one, two, three hours and 270 kilometers can be a rough, a rough guess here. If this is if I go up by um, if I go by by 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. So that's 200, 300. So 270 is going to be right about here somewhere, and that's three hours. So there's that point. Three comma two seventy, and I'll label this as time in hours, and this is distance in kilometers. Okay, the second point is uh, six hours. He travels six hundred and thirty kilometers. So four, five, six, six hundred and thirty, five, six. Right about again. This doesn't have to be perfect, but there we are. Right, right about there, I believe. Four, five, six hundred and thirty, more or less. So if I connect these, and there we go. So it looks like some time went on, and he didn't really go anywhere. I wonder what happened there. Six hours and six hundred and thirty kilometers. Okay, calculate the slope. 630 minus 270 over 6 minus 3. I'm going to get, uh, what is that, 360, I believe. Divide that by 3, and that's going to give me 120. And again, always, um, you know, if you can interpret this distance here, so that's 120 kilometers per hour because the hour is on the bottom and the kilometers up up on the top the slope of the line segment represents a rate of change a change in the distance divided by a change in time this rate is called the average speed as we all know if i say 120 kilometers per hour i know exactly how fast i'm going as opposed to saying oh i'm going 360 kilometers every three hours well that doesn't really uh, that doesn't really help me. I got to do some math conversion here. Okay, so so that is the average speed, and uh, let's uh, let's keep going here. So part D on the grid, plot the point zero zero and determine the average speed of the car during the first three hours of race. Point zero zero is here. Uh, the average speed of the car for the first three hours. Well, all we have to do for that is just get this the distance. The distance traveled, well, he traveled in the first three hours. He traveled from, what was it again? 0 to 270. So we'll go 270 minus 0. That's the distance in kilometers. That's the change in distance. Sometimes you might see a little triangle like this, change in distance. Triangle represents the word change. So change in distance over the change in time. And the change in time was three hours. Uh, hours so then we're gonna get 270 divided by 3 which is 90 90 kilometers per hour where did I go here oops sorry about this okay 90 kilometers per hour by looking at the graph without doing any calculations how can we tell the average speed during the first three hours or less than the average speed during the next three hours? Well, the, the simple way to do that is if I look at the, let me look at the, look at the slope here. Okay, and then for the first three hours, for the first three hours, uh, well, actually, what I did, I, I messed up here and I, I should have obviously connected this, this point here to the origin. So our graph is really it looks like this. So the the slope here is less less steep, which means it's going slower. You're you're not going you're not covering as much distance over the same period of time. Cool. So that's basically number E there. Okay. So again, the the steep the, the steepness of the slope represents how uh, how fast somebody's going. Uh, and here's kind of an important note that you're going to need for, uh, for Physics 11. Okay, guys, thanks for watching, and see you next time.